In the northern foothills of the Carina Range, you will find the coastal town of Carina. Boasting plentiful accommodation, ancient buildings, and unspoiled coast, this is a city which is most attractive to tourists. Balapais Monastery still stands in its magnificence in a small outlying mountain village. The monastery was built in the 12th century and is another amazing example of Gothic architecture in the eastern Mediterranean. Palapais Monastery was built on a small plateau 620 feet above the sea level on the edge of the Karinya Range. The name of the monastery means Monastery of Peace, a corruption of the French name Abbe de la Paix. These days, the monastery refectory is used for artistic events such as concerts by famous musicians from all over the world. The house of the famous English writer Laura Sturell, the author of Bitter Lemons, written in Cyprus during 1953 to 56, is worth visiting and is near Balabais Monastery. If you go to the city of Carinia, you will find another castle skirted by the sea, Carinia Castle, the strongest castle in northern Cyprus, bears traces of the Byzantine, Lusinian and Venetian periods. The most ancient merchant ship in the Mediterranean is on display in Carinia Castle, bringing you face to face with the very distant past. The modern explanatory animations in the rooms of the castle are designed to make the past come alive. They show the Lusinian dungeons, the Versi Neolithic habitations, the Actinus village graves, the Lusinian and Venetian towers, to name but a few. One of the most popular places for visiting tourists is the old Carinia harbour beside the castle. All along the edge of the harbour, there are restaurants sharing their fortune with fishing boats and yachts. Many of our newly wedded guests from all over the world partake of the charming environment of both Carinia castle and the harbour. There are many factors that make Carinia a rich city churches and mosques, beaches with a variety of water sports, rocky coasts and accommodation in unspoiled bays are only a few among many examples. If anyone wants to look down on Carinia from a higher position, it would be enough to pay a visit to the picturesque village of Kami clinging high in the skirts of the Carinia range. You can frame your authentic Mediterranean photos with bougainvillea blossoms in Carmi. The last castle, located at the highest point of the mountain range, is St. Hilarion Castle, giving visitors a bird's eye view of Carinia. St. Hilarion Castle is one of the most magnificent castles still standing. It is also said that St. Hilarion Castle was the inspiration for the castle in Walt Disney's film The Sleeping Beauty. The Queen's window in the castle gives visitors the opportunity and pleasure to look down from 732 metres above sea level onto a spectacular view, sweeping down through the foothills to the sea. After you leave the western end of the Karinya range, you should pay a visit to the unique Maronite village called Korucham or Komajit. The Maronites settled in Cyprus approximately 1,200 years ago. At present, in general, Maronites live in scattered in different villages, except for this lovely village in the northern Cyprus, where the population is entirely Maronite. Before 1974, there were almost 2,000 people living in Korucham, but now there are only hundreds who remain. Aios Yorgios Church in Kormajit is a special symbol for Maronites, although the architecture is unexceptional but it's the most important place of worship for the Maronite community in Cyprus. 
Every Sunday, Maronites from all over the island flock to Ayos Yorgios to attend to the service. The village is unique in that the mother tongue of the people who live there is Aramaic, influenced by Arabic. They are Maronite Catholics by faith, and they speak both Turkish and Greek. Leaving Kormajit village and journeying parallel to the west coast, you wind through the Mediterranean pine forests. Then the forests give way to vast areas of amazing orange groves. The main city here is called Gizelyurt. Ayas Mamad's church is one of the principal treasures of the city and it is dedicated to a saint of the region. It was built during the Byzantine period and was rebuilt during the Lusinian period. When the Ottomans came, some additions were made to the church, which is famous for its wood carvings. The icons and frescoes in the church are very interesting. The Gizelit Museum of Archaeology and Nature beside the church offers the visitor still more riches, such as a statue of Artemis, the crown of golden leaves from Soli, which are the most important pieces in the museum, and there are hundreds of other ancient and interesting artifacts. While Gizelut arrests your attention with the rich green of its orange groves, Lefka stands out with its historical background and its tranquility. Lefka is one of those rare cities which has preserved something of its original character from way back in Neolithic times. Of course, it has subsequently been overlaid by a succession of cultures Byzantine, Lusinian, Venetian, Ottoman, Turkish. Greek and English. There are houses reflecting the architectural style of the Ottoman period, estimated to have been built between 1900 and 1938. These houses have typical domestic Ottoman architectural features with their alcoves, arches and mud brick walls. Furthermore, Lefke has a connection with a name given to Cyprus, which is a corruption of the Latin word cuprum meaning copper. This connection can be explained by the fact that Lefke used to be near vast copper reserves and large mines. People like Lefke because of his urban style which reflects a traditional life, its aqueducts, the Ottoman style houses and majestic palm trees. In addition to all this, you can still find a stone with the royal crest built in a memory of George II. The ruins of the city of Soli lie near Lefke. The history of the city goes back to 11 BC. The ancient city of Soli, one of the nine city kingdoms of Cyprus, takes its name from the Greek philosopher Solon. The real attractions of this city are its Roman amphitheatre and the ruins of the great basilica with its beautiful mosaic floor. Among the depictions of the mosaics is a beautiful image of a swan surrounded by a vine motif featuring a bunch of grapes. The Roman amphitheatre in Soli was built on the remains of an earlier Greek amphitheatre and is on the edge of a hill from which you can see the sea in the distance. The seats for the audience are partially carved into the rock of the hill. Originally, the theatre had a seating capacity for 4,000 people. The Persian palace of Vuni was built to the west side of Soli. Apparently, the residents of Soli burned the palace to the ground, so today we must content ourselves with just the ruins of Vuni Palace, built on the flat top of the hill, with a breathtaking beautiful view of the sea. The palace had 137 rooms and was built by the Persian supporter, the king of the city kingdom of Marion in order to spy on Soli, which had allied itself with the Greeks. The ruins of the palace mostly show the location of administrative offices, bedrooms, supply stalls, steam baths and workplaces. Unfortunately, it was only used for about 70 years before it was destroyed by citizens of Soli in 380 BC. If you look to the west from the hill of Vuni, you can easily see the unsullied coastal village of Limnidi, or in Turkish, Yeshilurmak. The advantage of Yeshilurmak is its location. It is located in the far west of northern Cyprus. 
The rocky island outcrop near the coast has no connecting point with the land, but it is where Cyprus's first inhabitants settled in Neolithic times. The village is located in a green valley and is famous not only for its taro and strawberry fields, but also for orchards of a wide variety of fruit trees. Yeshil Urmak's genuine source of pride is a special grapevine, with religious bunches of Verigo grapes acknowledged in the Guinness Book of World Records as the biggest grapevine in the world. Northern Cyprus, with its 260,000 residents in five main regions, continues to be a multicultural treasure trove. It is a country that one should visit at least once in a lifetime. If you want to be a part of this living history, and if you want the contentment of being both in the Mediterranean and being an islander, please make sure that you follow up this invitation. Northern Cyprus is the country where the sunshine never ends.